Hey, what's up guys, welcome back, Kellen here with Droid Life. I've got in front of me or in my hand a Nexus 5 and it's running the brand new Android M Developer Preview 2 that Google released yesterday. Uh, so what we want to do is walk through some of the changes, new features, all that stuff. So you guys are caught up on where we went from 1 to Preview 2. Uh, we also wrote these up individually, uh, but we wanted to do a video for those of you who don't like to read. Uh, so this is just gonna be a quick compilation of some of the new stuff. Uh, if we have more, we'll obviously post it up and try to keep you informed there. But this is just kind of a quick overview. Uh, before we get in there though, I just wanna point out that the Developer Preview 2 is available for the Nexus 5, 6, 9, and Player. And uh, factory images are there if you wanna flash those to get updated from Preview 1 to 2. Um, if you don't want to do that, Google's actually pushing over the air updates pretty soon. It should be in the next day or so. We'll also try to sort of compile those links at, uh, at the site if you want to just manually sideload those. So anyways, developer preview two, it's out. Uh, so let's just start at the lock screen first, just to show you here, uh, that nothing has changed. So lock screen, you still have your quick access to voice searching, quick access to camera, and then you can just swipe up to unlock. So nothing really changed there. Uh, on the home screen though, if we jump into the app drawer, you'll notice a change right away. So in the in the original preview one, the app drawer got everyone uh, a little upset or confused or laughing. I don't know how you wanna, which way you wanna go there, but basically the, pre, the app drawer in the preview one was, it was something drastically different than what we were used to from Google. So uh, number one, they introduced vertical scrolling, which I actually like. Uh, it You can scroll faster with a single flick instead of the the paginated one by one page when it's horizontal. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but what they did do in preview one was include this sort of alphabetical list over here with letters. Um, and there were grouping apps under those letters and it just wasn't really a great experience. Um, so they've obviously done away with that now. Now you just have an alphabetical list of your apps in a four by five grid and you can just scroll through them and get to whatever app you want. Um, they also introduced uh, four recently used apps up top there. Those are still back in this one. And then there's a search box up there in case you just wanna search through your apps. You can also grab the scroll bar over here and jump between specific letters to get through things faster. So it looks like a much, um, a much more standard app drawer again, instead of that, that odd layout. I actually prefer this app drawer though to the one in Lollipop and all of the preview or builds earlier than that where they went horizontal. I'm actually a vertical scrolling kind of guy as long as it's fling like this. So uh, yeah, that, it's, it's changed, I would say for the better. Uh, a couple of things I wanna point out though, if we long press on home and go into settings, there's a couple options down here that you can tweak. So uh, the top one says show predictive apps, and those are actually those four recent apps that show up at the top of the app drawer, and then allow rotation. So we'll, we'll leave both of those on for a second. Well, I should say show predictive apps, you can actually toggle that off or on, and uh, when you go back into your app drawer, it's supposed to go away if you turn it to off, but at this time it seems to take a reboot in order to get that to go away. But if you're using the preview build and you don't want those there, turn it to off, reboot your phone, and that should go away. Um, as for the other one that says allow screen rotation, basically that means on your home screen you can go landscape on phones now. Why anyone would wanna do that, I'm not really sure, but you can set it to do that if you would really like to. Uh, phones are meant to be portrait normally, unless you're watching a movie or playing a game. So it's up to you, but uh, I will uh, turn that off. Uh, the other thing in here is if we go in the now cards section, you'll notice up top here, there is a section called now on tap. So Google now on tap uh, is not available in the preview one, and it's not supposed to be available in the preview two, but Google seems like they're getting close to maybe baking it in or letting us play with it a little bit. So you'll notice if you tap on it, there is an opt-in on tap screen that says we know how ugly this is and there's an out or in button. Quickly, uh, a quickly thrown together opt-in screen, I would argue. Uh, and so you can leave that on at this time if you long press on home. It doesn't do anything. So it's clearly not functioning yet, but that'll give you the opportunity to potentially test it down the road. So um, that's what's new there. I went on to point out that uh, if we take a screenshot now, and uh, we swipe down. Uh, not only do we get a share button, but we also have a delete button as well. So if you take a screenshot and you're not happy with it, you can go ahead and delete it right there without it hitting your gallery. Uh, that's been baked into custom ROMs forever, and I believe it's in Exposed as well. And uh, it's also in a number of other phones like the Galaxy S6. It just hasn't been a stock Android feature. So it technically is new, even though I know a lot of you don't think that it is. All right, so some other things here, if we'll jump into settings. Uh, if we jump into settings, I did wanna point out that uh, storage and USB is now an option. It used to be just storage, um, 
now called storage in USB. And so when we get into our internal storage, you'll just notice it's a much lighter, cleaner look. You no longer have these separate colors for all of your different categories. And the sort of meter that shows you how much storage you're using is no longer separated into colors by those categories, if that makes sense. You basically just have a single colored meter that shows you where you're at. But it's much clearer up top how much storage you're using of your total storage. So that's kind of nice. Uh, also, some of these things you can now, well, you've been able to tap on these and sort of tweak them for some time. Uh, it seems a lot faster to me now in uh, this preview build. And with images, rather than launching your Photos app or your Gallery app, it actually pulls into a little file manager that's built into Android. So that seems to be quicker. Then there's also this option down here for Explore, and it just jumps you right into a, the internal file manager and uh, lets you sort of play around with files in there. That's not necessarily new, although the Explore button is new. Uh, the other new thing in here is memory. So there's a new memory screen. Now in the Android M Preview 1, hard to say. This section was actually tucked under apps, followed by a menu press, advanced, then memory. It was really buried. And so they actually pulled it all the way up to the front so you can sort of monitor memory usage. And you can you can uh, drop this down to go by three, six, 12 hours or one day to sort of see what's been used. Or you can go in and look on an individual app basis. You can also change that by time as well. So a little more upfront with memory management just so you can see kind of how your phone's doing. Never a bad thing there. Um, the other thing that we wanted to point out is uh, if you go into developer options and uh, you toggle on this show system UI tuner. Now this was in the preview one um, and so that's not necessarily new, but if we toggle that on and you actually go in there and the option shows up under about phone, I've actually added some pretty cool features in here. So uh, in the preview one, you were able to adjust your quick settings toggle. So you can drag these around and sort of move them wherever you want. Um, you can add a couple of new tiles. Um, you can also grab one and remove it if you'd like. I'm going to leave those like that. So you can change that around. It seems a little bit more stable in this one as well. Um, I was using that in the preview one and it seemed to break my settings and stuff. So be careful in here. But again, it does seem a little bit more stable. Uh, there's an option here for show embedded battery percentage. Uh, so if we get up a little bit closer here, you'll notice my battery up top is actually showing my battery percentage inside the battery. So I can toggle that off and on. And you see now it's back to um, solid and I can toggle that back on. And so when not charging, it actually shows me the percentage in there. That's a huge deal. And why that's a huge deal is, I don't know how often you guys check battery, but normally when you swipe down once, um, you're just left with sort of this icon set with your time. Um, and you would need to swipe down a second time in order to see that battery percentage. Uh, if you have it embedded in there, you just really need to glance up and you can always see what your battery percentage is, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the other thing, which is very cool for those of us that are just a little bit OCD, the status bar section now allows you to toggle on and off icons that show up in your status bar. So like if you have Bluetooth on, let me go turn Bluetooth on, although I'm in airplane mode. There we go. So Bluetooth is on, you know, you have the little Bluetooth icon actually make that go away. So even though Bluetooth is on right now, you can make the icon go away. Uh, same with, you know, my Wi-Fi and airplane mode. I'm in airplane mode, but now the airplane's gone. Get rid of the cellular data icon. You can kind of get rid of most of everything. Battery meter and clock appear to have to stay there. Um, do not disturb mode. You can turn off, but it doesn't look like I can do the sound, so it still says vibrate. But either way, you sort of get the idea there. You can really clean up that whole area up there, which is really nice because we seem to be getting more and more icons on there. So um, other than that, that's pretty much all of the new stuff that we've seen so far. Um, not a lot of big changes, just some minor stuff, but still some things that seem to really add some polish to Android M. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of background bug fixes and things like that as well. Uh, should we stumble on more, we will be sure to let you know, especially if that Google Now on tap starts working. Otherwise, if you have comments, questions, or want us to test anything else, we can do that. Droid Life. Peace.